Hey folks, it's Joe here over at Agile Faith, and I've got another book to talk to you about. It's called Bullies and Saints. I don't have the cover. I left it at home because I always rip them and stuff, so I'll leave it in the safe place. Beautiful cover. I'll post a link to it, but uh, I hope you enjoy my quick synopsis of it. I'm only, yeah, I haven't even finished it yet, but I have to tell everybody about it because it's just so great. Uh, here we go. So in Saints and Bullies, they talk about how catacombs were created because back in the Roman days, the Romans were kind of brutal. They didn't have the same view of life that we did, that everyone has, you know, created in the image of God. I think it's called image Deo or whatever, how, how the Latin speak is. But the, uh, what I'm learning is, yeah, they, like they would take babies and if they didn't want it, they would just leave them out. You know, they just leave, after the born, they would just leave them, they call it by exposure. They would just expose them to the elements. This was a, a, a terrible fear of people who died. They didn't want to be torn apart by local animal life or, you know, whatever. So loved ones would have to pay a lot of money to get to get burial rights. So uh, Christians at the time, and then we're talking about 300 AD and before, maybe a little bit later than that, uh, decided, you know what, we're going to provide this burial service for free. So they went ahead and uh, just didn't charge. They just would take the bodies of loved ones, rich, poor, and bury them under the in the catacombs. Uh, they would also, this is kind of how, it, you know, they would save babies too. They would. Uh, this is how foster homes would start. It was. It wasn't called that, but it's kind of incredible that these two big innovations, and not only the physical structures of catacombs and eventually burial rites for all people. And uh, it's, it's more of, and then infant rights, basically. I'm not even talking about abortions, like after birth. Um, it's interesting to see that the, the, how we perceive human life now has been so fundamentally uh, shifted by Christ and by Christianity. So, you know, I think we are constantly, as he says in the book, constantly trying to live up to the song of the gospel, meaning to give to the poor, to take care of the needy, to defend those who have no defense, that kind of thing. So I think part of my learning is we've got to get back to those fundamentals.